live in interesting times. Today's stories. Public health officials nervous as holiday weekend approaches. Health Canada authorizes Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. Quebecers react to 2020 holiday pause. First round of immunization of COVID-19 vaccines begins. Snowstorm hits Vancouver Island, leaves thousands without power. EU and Britain sail post-Brexit trade deal. Montreal offers light therapy in pandemic winter. Hawaii's Kilauea volcano erupts, putting residents on alert. In sports, Clippers, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, dominate over city rivals, Lakers. Hello everyone, you are watching Eagle News International from Canada. I'm Cara Cabuso Pascual reporting from St. John, New Brunswick, bringing you stories from across the globe. health officials are feeling nervous as the holiday weekend approaches. Eagle News correspondent Thomas I. Likeness with a report. For weeks now, politicians and public health experts have been telling people to scale down their holiday plans. Don't travel. No big family gatherings. Keep it small and celebrate with just the people in your own household. Anything else, they say, can lead to a super spreader event. And that's what has the experts worried. A number of college and university students are planning to travel home for the holidays. Other people have made plans to be with family in distant communities. And while the lineups at airports will be shorter than in past years, tens of thousands of people will be at the passenger gates, boarding passes in hand. The federal government has an $850,000 advertising campaign urging people to stay home for now, travel later. The campaign is on social media and other digital platforms but not on television or radio. No indication of how effective these messages are. Alberta Premier Jason Kenney says there's always an element of society, though, that figures the rules don't apply to them. People who might be disinclined to violate the rules will do so anyway, unfortunately. We sure hope there's not many of those people out there. But if people are, are just going to blindly ignore these public health measures um, and put themselves or others at risk, by visiting multiple households, um, that is a decision. It's an irresponsible decision, but it is a decision that they're probably going to make uh, regardless of what uh, guidelines and, and, and restrictions the government uh, puts in place. The Premier worries about what will happen in January if people ignore the message not to travel and to avoid large gatherings. You know, Kenny says right now we have more than 800 people in hospital in Alberta being treated for COVID. We can manage with 800 cases in hospital. We cannot manage with 2,500 COVID cases in hospital without beginning to deny some people care and without cancelling all uh, non-urgent surgeries and non-COVID related uh, non-urgent health care. Leaders across North America are keeping their fingers crossed that enough people will heed their advice and we can avoid yet another surge in cases. Because you know, the next surge may overwhelm our ability to provide health care for people. And that's when uncomfortable decisions will have to be made. Decisions like who will get care, who will be saved, and who won't. In the meantime, I wish you all good health. Remember to take care of others. Take care of yourselves. Stay home, stay safe, and stay tuned to Eagle News for accurate and balanced coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic and other current affairs. In Edmonton, Canada, Thomas High Likeness, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Thank you, Thomas. Health Canada authorizes Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. Eagle News correspondent Andre Lajoie with the details. Health Canada authorized Moderna COVID-19 vaccine after its role independent review of the vaccine by the Government of Canada. The second COVID-19 vaccine was authorized by Health Canada in accordance to the interim order respecting 
the importation, sell, and advertising of the drug for the use of relations to COVID-19. Manufactured by Moderna, the vaccine met the safety, efficacy, and quality requirements of Health Canada. With Health Canada openness and transparency, a number of documents related to their decisions, including a high level of evidence, summary authorizations in the Moderna vaccine was reviewed to support its authorization. Both Pfizer and BioTech vaccines and Moderna COVID-19 vaccine are used to prevent COVID-19. According to Health Canada, the vaccine is improved for 18 years old and older. Moderna is currently conducting studies in children from 12 years old and older on its indication could be revised in the future for the use in children if the data of those studies support it. According to Moderna, based on the studies of about 30,000 participants, Moderna COVID-19 vaccine was 94.1% effective in preventing COVID-19, beginning two weeks after the second dose. Moderna COVID-19 vaccine is given two doses with one month apart. According to the Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, the first dose of the Canada's guaranteed 40 million doses of order from Moderna will arrive at the coming days. An additional quarter of a, quarter of a million doses from Pfizer in January, beginning a total, bringing it in total of 751,000 doses of Pfizer for January 2021. Canada is on track to have at least 1.2 million doses from both Pfizer and Moderna delivered by January 2021. This is André Dajwa for Radio News in Ottawa, Canada. We live in interesting time. In Quebec, citizens react to the 2020 holiday pause. Eagle News correspondent Marjorie Quintos files this report. In response to the recent developments in the epidemiological situation, Quebec has closed non-essential businesses during the holidays to help curb COVID-19. Quote, we think these measures will give us every chance to protect our hospitals and healthcare workers. Unquote. Quebec Premier Francois Legault said during news conference on December 15, 2020. According to Quebec government's website as of December 24, 2020, quote, for now, the spread of the coronavirus is under control in Quebec. But the present weeks are critical. Community transmission of the virus now extends to all regions of Quebec. The government is taking all the necessary measures to contain the contagion as much as possible. Unquote. Quebec imposed several prohibitions throughout the holiday season from December 17, 2020 to January 10, 2021 inclusively. However, during this period, there are a few exceptions, including a person who lives alone can join another family's home. A single parent family with one or more minor children can join another family's home. A single parent coupled with another single parent can get together inside their private residences. Gatherings of no more than six people will be permitted in regions and areas located in alert or orange zones. For these regions, it's recommended to do a voluntary confinement one week before and one week after the time of the gatherings. Other prohibitions are activities such as office parties are prohibited in all regions. Working from home is mandatory in all regions until January 10, 2021, except for workers whose physical presence is deemed by their employer to be required to maintain the operations of the company. Child care services, including daycares, CPEs, and family cares will remain open. However, families are advised to keep their children at home as much as possible. As for preschool and elementary school students, they will stay home and distance learning services will be provided. Secondary school students will stay home and distance learning services will be provided as well. Recreational activities such as outdoor group sports, Cultural and recreational activities are permitted in public settings, including courses, fitness training, and guided activities, whether alone, as a family, or in groups that have no more than eight participants 
plus one supervisor as long as everyone stays at least two meters away from the other participants. In Montreal, this is Marjorie Quintos. We live in interesting times. Thank you, Marjorie. In Vancouver, the first round of immunization vaccines for COVID-19 begins. Eagle News correspondent Kathleen Cruz with more. The first round of immunization of COVID-19 vaccines here in the province of British Columbia began on Tuesday, including BC's Provincial Health Officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry. According to Health Minister Adrian Dix, Dr. Bonnie Henry received her first dose of Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine to show full confidence in the safety of vaccine and show support to all of the health care workers. Over the coming days, the first 4,000 doses of vaccines from Pfizer will be administered to frontline health care workers who work in long-term care homes and frontline health care workers essential to the COVID-19 response. Dr. Boney Henry also rolled out the vaccination plan for BC as more vaccines continue to arrive. And we've also made the decision based on uh, looking at all of the data, the modeling from BC CDC, and discussions of the ethical framework that we will um, be providing the second dose of both Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine around day 35. So the recommended from the, the company is around day 28. Um, but we, we know we can immunize way more people in the first couple of weeks with their first dose of vaccine and provide that increased protection for people during this very critical time if we just slightly delay when people start getting their second dose. So for people who uh, received the vaccine last week and this week and in the first weeks of January, you will be called back for your dose around day 35 from when you had your first dose. So the estimate numbers of doses that we will be receiving between now and March is about 792,000. And with the strategy that we have adopted, that will allow us to, to provide about 549,000 people with their first dose, with the protection that we get from that first dose, which is incredibly important. And about uh, 240,000 people will also receive their second dose. Moderna vaccines have also been recently approved by Health Canada and are set to arrive next week. They will be distributed as soon as they arrive. Specially, Moderna vaccines are easier to transport compared to Pfizer vaccine. As these vaccines become more available, they will be administered to priority populations until the end of January 2021. In Vancouver, Kathleen Cruz, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Still in BC, a snowstorm hits Vancouver Island, leaving thousands without power. Eagle News correspondent Vanessa Condi with the details. Wind has come to Vancouver Island. The snowstorm that hit this week had left thousands of people without power. BC Hydro was working hard to fix the power outages. However, some had more than a day without power. The difficult conditions were creating challenges for the crew. There were some traffic collisions due to the snow and the police have issued cautionary warnings when driving. Widespread snowfall also is expecting to be underway across South Central Ontario. There has also been a weather warning for winds gusting to 90 kilometres per hour for Haida Gwaii and the North Coast. It is important for people to be very careful during this winter season. In Victoria, BC, Vanessa Condi, Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Britain and the European Union strike a post-Brexit trade deal that they hope will cushion the economic blow of the UK's departure from the bloc after months of torturous negotiations. So I'm very pleased to tell you uh, this afternoon uh, that we have completed the biggest trade deal yet, worth £660 billion a year, a comprehensive Canada-style free trade deal between the UK and the EU.
So we have finally found an agreement. It was a long and winding road, but we have got a good deal to show for it. It is fair, it is a balanced deal, and it is the right and responsible thing to do for both sides. And I want to stress that uh, although, of course, uh, the, the arguments with our European friends and partners were uh, were sometimes uh, fierce. This, this is, I believe, a good deal for the whole of, uh, of Europe uh, and uh, for, uh, for our friends and partners as well. Cet accord demandera des efforts, je le sais, mais l'Union européenne sera présente aux côtés des pêcheurs européens pour les accompagner. C'est notre engagement. The United Kingdom is a third country, but it remains a trusted partner. We are long-standing allies. In the heart of downtown Montreal, a special sound and light display has been set up to try to bring some comfort to residents of a city that has been battered by months of coronavirus and may be in need of a little seasonal light therapy. Je pense que la luminothérapie, ce principe-là, d'allumer un peu l'esprit, puis de nous réveiller, puis de nous garder animés, puis c'est exactement ce qu'on essaie de créer avec ces objets-là qui sont ludiques, puis qui nous font du bien, surtout dans le contexte actuel là où les gens sont isolés. Je pense qu'on a tous besoin de thérapie cette année, beaucoup plus que les autres années. Puis là, de, de maintenir cette activité-là accessible, gratuite, en ville, euh, ça permet un peu de sortir de nos bulles, puis de tout ce qui est restrictif, puis de se permettre de comme, voir autre chose. Coming up, Hawaii's Kilauea volcano erupts, putting residents on alert. And Clippers' Paul George, Kawhi Leonard dominate over city rivals, Lakers. Eagle News International continues after this. Hey there, Arnie Aquino here at Hatley Castle, one of the filming locations for the X-Men series. Don't forget to tune in to Digital Nest only on Net25. Welcome back. You are watching Eagle News International from Canada. I am Cara Cabuso Pasquale from St. John, New Brunswick. Just less than three years since its last eruption, Kilauea volcano on Hawaii's Big Island is once again showing signs of increased activity, resulting in a 4.4 magnitude earthquake and the formation of a lava lake at its crater. According to authorities, conditions have since stabilized and there was no tsunami threat. 
Eagle News correspondent Alfred Asenas from our Hawaii Bureau explains how this latest national phenomenon began. As of um, Sunday, December 20, at 10.36 p.m. Hawaii time, which would be 4.36 p.m. Philippine time, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, HVO, under the U.S. Geological Survey, recorded a magnitude 4.4 earthquake located beneath Kilauea Volcano's south flank. The earthquake was centered within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, where the volcano is obviously located. And there's a map showing its location uh, on the HVO website where these tremors have happened um, in the last uh, several uh, hours. Uh, so this is the actual uh, website that HVO is referring to, and you can see a whole lot of seismic activity happening along the south flank of Big Island. And here is the, the results showing the different um, times that tremors have taken place to include the 4.4 that took place at 1036 p.m. Um, there has been reports of weak to light shaking with uh, intensity 4, uh, which has been reported across the island of Hawaii. At that intensity, significant damage to buildings or structures is not ex expected. A scientist in charge, David Phillip, uh, mentioned that his team will continue to monitor Kilauea as the situation is rapidly evolving uh, with this evening's eruption uh, at its summit. Now, the south flank has been the site of over uh, 30 earthquakes uh, of 4.0 or greater in the last uh, 20 years, obviously, to include uh, the ones in, uh, in, in 2018. Most are caused by abrupt motion of the volcano's south flank, which moves to the southeast uh, over the oceanic uh, crust. Now, keep in mind that uh, there are uh, uh, very small communities that line uh, the coastline here. A and what's what's uh, significantly different about uh, uh, this eruption compared to the one in 2018 is that back in 2018 you have these uh, uh, villages of, of Pahoa, uh, Leilani Estates and, and thereabouts uh, that are on the southeast uh, approximately uh, from, the, from the crater. Now according to authorities uh, the fallout of ash uh, and, and um, uh, some volcanic debris will be likely in places like Na'alehu and Ocean View, this time on the south, um, southwest uh, corner of, of Big Island. So we, uh, authorities are asking everyone stay indoors to avoid ash and intense heat. And thankfully, there is no reports of a, a tsunami threat as a result of this 4.4 um, earthquake. And uh, just to confirm uh, what the scientific community has reported, uh, Kai Kahele, who is the newly elected uh, Congress, congressman uh, who hails from, from Big Island, um, tweeted uh, on Sunday night that his home in Hilo, Hilo Town is the big town uh, that's uh, located uh, here, uh, his home rocked a 4.4 magnitude earthquake, and he uh, puts a, a little remark here, just when you thought, uh, 2020 could not get any worse now. Uh, we have lava and embedded falling ash to deal with, keeping in mind, uh, of course, that to this day, you have residents who are still recovering, who are still rebuilding from the 2018 uh, volcanic eruption. On top of that, the Big Island, just like the rest of the world, is also dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is, uh, 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 can be considered as the first major test for newly uh, elected Mayor Mitch Roth, who got elected mayor of this uh, big island back in November. Reporting from Honolulu, I'm Alfred Asenas, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Back to you. A 
new season with a new coach and a fresh mindset begins for the LA Clippers. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard dominated against city rivals LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and the Lakers in Tuesday's NBA season opener. Eagle News correspondent Tani Sumagi with the recap. Memories of the LA Clippers playoff collapse last season is now history. The team starts the new season with a fresh mindset and a new head coach in Tai Lu. High expectations surround the team's dynamic duo of Paul George and Kawhi Leonard to bring the Clippers its first NBA championship in franchise history. George and Leonard dominated against LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and the defending champions Lakers in Tuesday's NBA season opener. You know, when one person does great, we all do great. And um, that's what we want to get across. Um, that's our model for this season. Like, we cheer for each other. And when somebody does well, we want to be there. And when somebody's doing bad, we want to be there. So PG, you know, in the second half, you know, you know, we was able to draw some plays up to get him in the ISO situation, to get some matchup and post up on the elbow, um, catch and shoot. So, um, PG just had an overall phenomenal, you know, great game, you know, going 13 for 18 from the field and got more aggressive in the second half. We we'll just play basketball. I applied the work that I put in this offseason. It's not going to be pretty every night. Tonight I got it going and um, was able to show a big and big time for my team. Um, like I was just saying, I just appreciate everyone um, staying locked in and focused and just being positive and, you know, keeping their heads up. Um, you know, once we seen the, um, the league going down, uh, you know, we talked to each other. We tried to figure out what was going on. And um, we came out in the second half and playing good basketball. We ended that third quarter well and uh, finished the fourth quarter uh, pretty good, too. So um, that's what I take pride in, um, not to miss or make shots. Uh, as long as we communicate on the floor, doing our defensive jobs, uh, I mean, it just feels good out there to play basketball. Tune in to Eagle News for more highlights on this season's NBA games. In New York, Tani Sumagi, Eagle News, we live in interesting times. That's our program for today. Join us next week as we bring stories that matter to you. Visit our website at eaglenews.net and eaglenewslive.com. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash eaglenews and on Facebook at facebook.com slash eaglenews. Thank you for watching. I am Cara Cabuso Pascual. We'll live in interesting times.